Hello, welcome to the Small Loft Workshop. I'm John. It's Sunday the 18th of February, two o'clock in the afternoon, and it's a really vile day outside. We're a couple of days post storm Eunice, and it's still relatively windy, but nowhere near as bad as it were Friday, but it's just pouring out there. And I've just come back from a dog walk, and it's, it is really horrendous. However, the reason I mention the weather is it's perfect for a little experiment. Four weeks ago, I made my fold down MFT, which surprisingly, is doing really well so if you watch that thank you guys just recently I've had a lot of new subscribers that's come from that video so welcome to the loft didn't actually mean to spend any time up in the loft today just finished two projects which I started editing this morning they'll be out in the next few days but there were some comments on the fold down MFT workbench about whether to use MDF or plywood comments were that plywood is much more stable than MDF specifically birch plywood however birch plywood is still a generic term when it comes to plywood that comes from a whole host of manufacturers there's so many different species of plywood that it's really hard to compare the plywood market even though I've been around the woodwork industry for 40 years I've never actually bought a sheet of birch plywood however I have sold thousands of sheets of birch plywood and I think there's two things to consider when buying birch plywood first of all finished birch plywood and Baltic plywood which is probably mostly Russian and Latvian in my experience there's a lot of difference between the two the finished birch plywood have their own association the finished birch plywood association and spend a lot of the time compiling rafts of test data aimed at the timber engineering market and in my experience the finished birch plywood is a real quality plywood and whilst Baltic birch plywood can be really good quality there also is some lesser qualities out there now this information is based on my experience 20 years ago when I worked for a timber importer I'm sure it's changed a lot since then and will supply issues and made difference in 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 recent supplies so please drop me a comment if you think from what I'm talking about here is not right or needs to be embellished I'm sure it certainly needs to be embellished we're still working in an industry that specified WBP plywood well that's not existed for 25 years the WBP has been replaced by British standards and European BSEN classifications 25 years ago so the plywood markets moved on and and once we were importing plywood 25 years ago most of the plywood came from Indonesia Malaysia or Brazil now we see a lot of plywood from China there's a lot of softwood Canadian plywood softwood plywoods from South America too and and of course different species of trees grow at different rates different temperature affects different rates of growth which means thicker or thinner veneers which all affect the number of veneers you have in your plywood and the more veneers generally the more stable the plywood is. Work, I spend a lot of time in drywall construction where we put plywood patches inside partitions and I spend a lot of time arguing plywood versus OSB when it comes to pull out strength. Pull out tests that I have performed at work suggest that OSB can outperform most plywoods when it comes to pulling a screw from the face of of the plywood like the Finnish Birch Plywood Association some OSB manufacturers have also compiled lots of test data to present to the timber engineering industry to substantiate their products I just thought I'd do a little experiment between the difference between MDF and plywood using my PATH MFT guide jig and the only reason I'm using the, the guide it's the most scientific experiment I could think of whilst I've been walking the dog in the rain I have some MDF which is an offcut of the MDF that I use for the offcut bench definitely know it's not Medi I buy this from my local supplier and the reason I use the local supplier is they have really good quality softwoods but their MDF and plywoods are just cut up from 8B4s and cut to 8B6B2s 4B2s 2B2s that kind of thing and you don't know where they've come from most of the markings have been removed what I do know it's not Medi because Medi has that sort of triple sandwich layer uh, so it's quite unique when you look at the end of a medite sheet could be caber could be Cronus man the other two uk productions or it could just come from anywhere else in the world so i don't know what it is and i have a good guess that it was bought on price rather than quality but i buy it from there because literally i can walk up the road pick a piece up and walk back down again it's so near to my house so it's just easy i don't use a lot of mdf anyway so i don't actually have a lot of mdf around apart from these two workbenches so i'm going to use that and as i said i never bought any bottling perch or before i left my job but there was we used to cut up a lot of birch plywood for sort of trade customers and we've cut you know one two packs at a time we didn't do the retail walking customers and i've had about four or five lengths of this which was off cut in the corner of that lot for well 20 years i guess it's finished birch plywood it's got really good quality grains let's see if i to focus on that for you come on focus 
So I'm going to use this in the experiment and just for, for another experiment, I've got a bit of softwood here which is a ripping off a tongue groove board. So I'm going to use this as well. So when I made this bench, I didn't complete all the holes and the reason for that is I thought I was going to probably at some point put an extension piece on here so I wanted these to reference from. However, for today's experiment, it might be quite good. These holes here, see if we can still get the pins in. Two pins and a drill bit. So I made this bench in November last year, so it's been up in the loft since then. So that's that pin. Actually, that is slightly offset. So that would suggest that since I made this top, this worktop has over one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, over eight holes, so eight times 96, just short of what's that 700 and 780 ish millimeters the old three millimeters probably expanded by a quarter of that so probably about 0.75 of a millimeter something like that now this roof space is unheated it's a cold roof space it's ventilated to the outside so in winter it's cold up here and in summer it's hot what i'm going to just propose as an experiment how scientific it is then you let me know i'm going to drill holes in these pieces I can just get the the full length of the ruler in one two three four five six seven nine nine hundred and sixty millimeters i'll drill up in the end then i'm going to take them downstairs and put them by the radiators leave them a day and when i finish work tomorrow night i'll uh, offer them up to the jig and see whether they still fit or whether they've shrunk back now i won't actually expect the softwood to move that much because we're talking about longitudinal grain and it shouldn't contract expand much whereas of course the, the man-made boards of plywood and mdf probably move more but we'll see so let's drill some holes go and put them by the radiator and then probably come back tomorrow and uh, see if we've got any changes now i've got them all clamped up i'll just put one hole straight through so that works fine And that's the other one cool right okay so that's my six holes drilled in three pieces of wood the softwood the birch plywood and the mdf so i'll take them downstairs now and see what the difference is in around about 28 29 hours as i said earlier with the rain today's a perfect day to do this because cold and damp up here so we'll actually take one of these downstairs as well seeing i have two i'll leave one up here one downstairs see if that makes any difference coefficient of linear expansion and all that see whether the two jigs are different over the temperature variant I shall see you tomorrow. So hello again, it's now Monday afternoon, 1657, 21st of Feb. These sections have all been sat by the radiator for 28, 29 hours. So let's do the test before they change too much. How much of this information is going to be empirical observations? It's obviously not scientific. I am going to do another test by putting these in the shed for a little bit and see how they get on out there, even damper than, than it is in here. And I'll come back and report that back to you later probably next week let's have a look first of all okay so first of all let's have a look at the two metal ones warm metal cold metal certainly a lot of difference to feel in terms of temperature just out of curiosity how much the coefficient of linear expansion will change over probably what's a 20 degrees temperature rises well it's nothing so they so right the timber ones mdf plywood softwood let's do the softwood first because that was kind of interesting the first pin in okay that's shrunk back let's have a look let's see if we can catch it on on this because it's probably 
So that's probably shrunk back about a third of the diameter of the hill. So maybe even half a diameter of the hill. So that's actually shrunk back by probably about one and a half millimeters. Could even be two. No way the pin's gonna go in, in there. So we'll cut the MDF. That's not shrunk as bad as the softwood, but that's certainly shrunk back a third of an hole. Again, I hope you can see that. I know it's very minute. Again, there's no way the pin's going to go in there. That's probably shrunk back over this 960 millimetres. Millimetre, maybe even millimetre and a half. Okay, so that's that one. And the plywood, last but not least. That is, I can get the, just about get the pin in. So there has been some shrinkage. I shrunk back tiny amount, but I think with a struggle, without breaking my pin, yeah, I can get the pin in. There we have it, guys. The in this test, the plywood as one, which is probably what we expected. That gives me a little guidance of what to expect over the moving now from the winter into the spring and then to the summer. These MDF tables will slightly move in during the summer so the centres at a 960 will end up being on that evidence. We'll go from 960 to 964 and a half. What we expected was all the holes would shrink in as I went from the damp and cold up here down to the, the warm central heating below. Put them in the shed obviously we'll expect it to go the other way. So I think in conclusion based on this evidence and it's only as I say empirical evidence that the plywood was more stable than the MDF assuming this is finished birch plywood probably two or three times the price of MDF and I think the other thing to bear in mind as well is certainly certainly for me that I can go to a local DIY shop and buy a four foot by two foot sheet of MDF for I remember rightly saying that this one cost me to one of them cost me 13 pounds i'd have to have a look i know there is sellers on ebay that sell 18 millimeter birch plywood again whether it's finish or baltic i don't know kind of what kind of money but certainly unless you want to buy one offline or go down to an importers or timber merchant as a wide range of stock you kind of have to go to a, almost a specialist outlet to get the birch plywood and probably might have to buy a full eight by four sheet i would think so anyway i hope you enjoyed this video i do feel i may have kicked a bit of an on its nest and I'll be very interested to see what all the comments are. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you thought it was useful and I'll see you soon. Bye.